Hello and welcome to the Audiobook Club. In this week's episode, I'm thrilled to be joined with the wonderful audiobook director, producer, editor, proofer and clubhouse host, Morrison Ellis. Moors, thank you so much for joining me on the show. How are you today? Hi, John. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, very well. Just um, finished four days in the studio this week. I've got a, a rare day at home just to catch up with some editing and some pickups um, and uh, look out the window, see what's going on. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very rare to be able to do that and probably go for a walk later. But also join you on this uh, amazing podcast. I've been listening to the previous episodes and they've been fantastic. So thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind words. I appreciate that. It sounds like you're having a busy time over there at, at Ladbrook. Yes, yes, we've been pretty much busy for a very, very long time. I've been at Labrick now for five years and uh, we've been working nearly, nearly every week, every day of the week. I mean, this week uh, we've been doing two books this week, uh, two days with Nathaniel Priestley on Monday, a book um, called Rewilding the Seas. It's all about getting nature back into the seas and rewilding the seas. Ooh, and uh, at nice. the end of the week, oh, it, was, it was very good fun, very interesting yeah. and uh, no... no um, David Attenborough voice is needed. <laughs> you never know. You know so. And um, at the end of the week, I've been doing a book on the Higgs boson particle. And, um, you know, it's all about Geneva and the Large Hadron Kaleidoscope. Yeah. And coincidentally, tomorrow I'm off to Geneva, actually. Um, and, well, I will pop in and try and see the, the kaleidoscope, try and, get a, try and get a selfie. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so, so talk about taking my work a bit too seriously. And uh, maybe I can get some pron- help with pronunciations. That'd be quite it's a good all term. part of research. It all is. It is. Research. Uh, that's what I'm going to tell the tax man. You know, it's, it's a tax deductible uh, research <laughs> yeah. trip to Geneva. So, um, yeah, it should be good fun. So this should come out. I should be back by the time this comes out. So hopefully yeah. no one will rob my house whilst I'm away. So that's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, that's good. That sounds great. I hope you have a fantastic time. What an experience. Yeah, be quite, quite good fun just to see what's going on. It's just a, yeah. a last minute deal, but it just coincidentally it's um geneva as well so we'll yeah. see what happens so wow, it should be incredible good. now if we may i'd love to start right at the very beginning can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in this mad world of sound and audiobooks well i uh, did a degree i've always loved audio and uh, i did a degree in media writing at southampton solent university which was script writing and journalism, comic book writing. And I actually did a, a sitcom for my dissertation. Oh, nice. And I, I always loved uh, recording, recording things. And um, it came up when I finished my degree, got my degree. I came back to Tunbridge Wells where I live. And there was a job at a transcription translation company called Transmedia Link, um, which did Braille and audio translations and large print for the blind and visually impaired. Yeah. Um, also sign language translations for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. Yeah. And um, I began working there on audio versions of bank statements, government documents, letters, uh, council tax reminders, um, and slowly worked my way up and began uh, became a senior producer there in the studio, working on things like Marks and Spencer magazine on audio, yeah. um, BP annual report and accounts, uh, just just major 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 documents, um, making sure they're they're in a, 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 you know an accessible format so blind and visually impaired people can live independent lives and enjoy the same things as everybody else, and um, it wasn't long. After that, I became the general manager, and that was more an account management sort of business development sort of role. And I got to go to all these different head offices of the FTSE 100 companies, um, selling in accessible solutions, working out the most, you know, the, mo- the best solution, uh, the best cost as well to try and to try and make sure that documents are provided in the format that everybody needs um, and in the most efficient time scale and cost, you know, possible. Yeah. Um, and shortly after, I became the general manager. My father, it was actually the week I became the general manager, my father got struck down with meningitis and um, he collapsed and um, I was away at the time skiing and I got a, a call that dad's collapsed and I came back and, um, you know, we were told he was going to die basically. Yeah. But he did somehow recover and um, he lost all of his sight and most of his hearing. And so I was in sort of in the right place at the right time in the accessibility industry. Yeah. And it became a very very deep passion of mine uh, to, to, to try and you know rehabilitate dad but as well as uh, I could see firsthand um, the needs of the blind the visually impaired um, you know entertainment you know audiobooks uh, ex- communications bank statements uh, anything and everything you know if your hobbies your passions um, audio um, braille music and that sort of thing and um, so it became very very important to me and the business grew and grew 
yeah. the Transmedia link grew and grew. And um, we had such amazing clients, Barclays Bank, Nationwide Building Society, um, the Argos catalogue. We were the first guys to produce the Argos catalogue on audio. Um, and I had to go to Milton Keynes to their head office and be sort of handcuffed to a suitcase, <laughs> suitcase to the Argos because we couldn't have the computer. It was back then it wasn't digital. So, yeah. well, maybe it, it was digital, but, um, you know, this was the first print of the Argos catalogue. So I had to come yeah. home with a suitcase. And um, so wow. we worked on these sort of projects and um, it, was, it was amazing, you know, got to, got to go to all these different head offices and um, government departments and that sort of thing. Um, and eventually, sadly, technology beat us. I mean, we were... Uh, for the swine flu pandemic, we produced over 50,000 uh, CDs of, oh, a, gosh, of, of yeah. the guidance. And I've recently, I'm still working in, I still do voiceovers for the government. And for coronavirus, we're just producing MP3 versions that go on websites. So you can yeah. see that there was a, you know, there was a big business there with, with costs of copies of Braille copies as well, which have gone yeah. digital. And the director eventually decided to uh, close the business Um and oh, no, and also AI was 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 getting involved as well. Audio transcriptions mm. uh, produced by AI. So that business sort of sort of folded. Um, so we were left. You know, what do we do? And um, because I was passionate about accessibility, um, yeah. I was tweeting a lot about it. And LinkedIn, um, a local charity, contacted me and asked me to help them with their running their charity for a couple of weeks. Um, and then I was contacted by. Um, I was contacted by a friend who, who worked at Red Apple Creative, which is a studio in, in London, SNK Studios. And he said there was a chance to produce some audiobooks. And he knew that about my editing skills and my yeah. producing skills. And um, I gave it a go, went to London. And my first audiobook was with Barnaby Edwards, the great Barnaby Edwards. And um, he was fantastic. I mean, you know, talk about a masterclass in prep. Um, uh, we did the book called The Ghost of K2, which is about the K2 mountain. And there was so many different languages. Yeah. And Barnaby yeah, who had it all in hand, every single pronunciation he'd used, I annotate and recorded every single pronunciation for every different language. And it was just 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 incredible. And um, and it, it was a great experience, a great person. And, and um, yeah, and we still we still do some audio books with Barnaby to date. But, um, you know, he's, he's he's just amazing. It was a great, great introduction. I work with Lorelei King as well on one of her books. Um, I work with David Rintoul, David Monteith. And um, it was great, but the money money wasn't great. And yeah. um, so I decided to take a full time position um, for a translation company working in patents and intellectual property, um, which was great because obviously there was still a chance to explore accessible communications, um, p copyright law, uh, mm. the World Intellectual Property Organization. Um, you know, only about three or four percent of all books in the world are accessible. And a lot of that is to do with copyright. So yeah. uh, it was still quite interesting to to look into that. And as a sideline, as a side hustle, I was editing audiobooks and proof listening right. with my dad. So I would uh, go to, you know, see dad in the evenings or weekends, have a proofing project on the go, and he'd be next to me. And I would obviously spot mistakes and noises and things like that. But he would yeah. say, ah, well, not, you know, he would give it from a blind person's perspective as well, which was, yeah. which was, which was great fun. And um, after a while, um, I was looking at was on Twitter and the amazing Neil Gardner, who you might have had on one of these shows, <laughs> <laughs> the amazing Neil Gardner got in touch and he said, look, um, would you like to meet up? I was already editing for him, you know, a freelance so for Labrook. And he got in touch and he said to me, look, um, we're expanding Labrooks. We're going to have open a second studio. Would you like to come and have a chat? So we I mean, went up to meet him in Croydon and we got on like a house on fire. We're still, you know, very, very good friends, best friends now. And, um, I, I went to Croydon. We we had a chat. We did a round of disc golf, which is uh, um, in, in in Croydon, Lloyd Park. There's a frisbee golf. So we were spinning discs together, <laughs> right from the right from the very beginning, right from the very beginning. And um, we sort of sort of did that, and we sort of you know chatted. And we said, well, look, would you like to come to Labrook? So new open studio two in Labrook expanded, and um, since then, for the last five years, I've been working with incredible people such as Saul Reichlin, John Bates, uh, John Bates, uh, John Banks, sorry, <laughs> he's going to go mad. John Banks, not John Banks, Matt Bates, John Banks, uh, Joe Jameson, um, Billy Fulford Brown, Anna Clements, who you've had on here before. Um, yeah. and, and so many other uh, amazing people. So they're going to be annoyed that I haven't mentioned them, but, um, <laughs> we work, you know, we work with everybody from Ashet to Bonnier to Orion to Audible to Harper Collins to, to Penguin, of course, Penguin, yeah. of course, are one of our biggest clients but um i'm I'm very lucky i get to work with new narrators authors 
I get to work uh, with experienced narrators. Um, it's, it's actually quite good fun working with someone who's not recorded an audio book before and giving them advice. And yeah. what I love about the job is, I mean, five years have gone by now and there's narrators coming back who did their first book with, with us at Labrook. And it's so lovely to hear and follow their journeys and how they've, how they've developed and what they're working on next. And they say, well, I remember that thing you told me back <laughs> all those years ago. I said, really? Um, and so with these people, I mean, when I've met Anna Clements, she's always been great. She sent me freelance work and Billy Fulford Brown. And they, they recommend me to other, other studios. They rec when they record their own books at home, they get in touch and say, look, we've got a book we've recorded at home. Can you produce this? So in addition to the elaborate work, I also work for a, a plethora of, um, yeah. of narrators at home. Uh, amazing lady, Ella Lynch, I work for. She's fantastic. Um, and they all recommend me to other people. And um, yeah, projects are coming in. You know, on average, I get a new inquiry once, one or two each month. Um, yeah. with a new narrator so it's quite busy I don't know where I find the time and also to go to Geneva as well <laughs> at the time that I am but um and um but it's but it's great fun I get to work with a lot of different uh yeah. genres a lot of different narrators um and uh yeah and I do, and I do the clubhouse on a on a Sunday night as well so it's um it's busy very busy <laughs> It must be very rewarding having, you know, having a constantly expanding network, especially after working yes. with these people and having them recommend you and people getting in touch. It must be, you know, you must feel pretty good about the work that you're doing. Well, that's the thing. I always think, you know, if you just work hard at your thing and, uh, you know, I know the, the Braille company was more sort of cutthroat, more sort of, you know, you've got to, you're competing against other companies. Whereas yeah. in the audiobooks industry, if you do a good job, if you can't do it, recommend somebody else. That's mm. the key, um, you know, and, and somebody might recommend you. I mean, we've, I've got a network of friends now of editors who, who if I can't do something, I would immediately recommend recommend them. And, yeah. um, you know, and they, they would recommend me vice versa. And I wouldn't feel bad about it. Whereas mm. in previously, you'd think, well, I want to do this work. I want I want the job. But yeah. now with the audiobooks world, you think, well, I know someone who's good at that. And I always, you know, it's, it's quite lucky, really. Working with Neil at Labrook, if he if he's after a certain voice, etc., he'd probably go to an agency uh, to get a voice, etc. Or we, we'd, he'd come and ask me, who did we work with who was good at that? And now my freelance clients, I'm actually recommending them to Neil as well, saying, look, actually, you might not have heard of this person, but they're they're brilliant. They've done all these books for ACX. They've done books for Findaway. They're they're great to work with. They've got an amazing setup at home. Yeah. Um, let's give them a go. So, you know, it's it's um, this industry is very, you know, everybody knows everybody. I mean, I've still got friends at Red Apple Creative. There's friends in other studios. Um, it's 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 just a very loving community. And uh, yeah. that's what's good about it. That's what's good about this community. It's definitely. Yeah, yeah. I know from my experience of, of you know, uh, of integrating with the community, really how friendly it is. And as you say, it's it's, it's sort of very honest as well. And, and people it just seems yes. so helpful and people want to help each other out and help each other, you know, go through their journeys and their careers and things. It's It's really rewarding and very pleasant, I'd say. <laughs> I'd say, well, that's that's why we love doing the Sunday schmooze on Clubhouse and Clubhouse yeah. in general. I mean, we've met so many amazing people this year. Uh, I've, yeah. I've met so many people on, on Clubhouse. Uh, the Sunday morning group, Emma, uh, Peter and Curtis. Um, and then and obviously on the Sunday evening, Sunday schmooze, we've, we've got some amazing people who come every week. Yeah. They come every week and they they send me a message, you know, of a, of a you know, uh, of an evening what a brilliant brilliant chat that was you know that's really helped me this week thank you we've met this um amazing blind uh producer director called samuel wilkins i've yeah. met him through clubhouse and he sort of you know he sort of you know invigorated my passion for accessibility he's he's um you know every week he comes up with a, he's a fantastic contribution every week yeah. and it's just um it's just it's brilliant to um yeah, to be amongst this this group of people i mean yeah. it's, it's sort of you know you get a buzz off everybody you know if somebody does well you cheer it it's really really good um it's, it's just really good it's just a great network really i think i was going to ask and i think you've, yeah. you've, you've answered it there really with your personal connection to uh, the wonderful work certain organizations do producing content for those who are visually impaired and such and, yeah. and how helpful and enjoyable audio audiobooks can be in that regard um would you say that's the sort of leading drive of, of passion for for you in this career it it is indeed it is it, well, it, well it was for for many for many times um lately i've had to reevaluate things my father passed away um a year ago uh next month and he was obviously my passion and desire for yeah. producing accessible formats so you know the, it was the dad project i wanted to make sure he was re rehabilitated and and also live a 
as independent life as possible get enjoy his enjoy his um hobbies he had yeah. great love for music so we would get hold of audio uh, books of different musicians and sometimes they were recorded so badly we'd be sitting there listening together so i had a special treat for him his favorite audio book from his favorite musician yeah. and the quality was just dreadful and obviously because he's blind and partially deaf as well because of the meningitis it, it was it was yeah very very um, very hard for him to hear it so that was a disappointment so i thought well audio productions need to be clear um and recording the best settings and uh, yeah. if i can do anything to help that and um sort of yeah i had to reevaluate everything last year do i still want to do this i mean that was my passion um and the answer is yes because of the people i work with and the mm. people who come into the studio um i had amazing support neil gave incredible support um anna and billy and ella and everybody yeah. all, all the people i work with um david monteith fantastic fantastic narrator he also lost his father around the same time and the the, the support um, that he gave and in the studio I work with the great Peter Polycarpu um, and a few other people and they, they and uh, they all wrote through Joe Jameson everybody they they all wrote through afterwards and they said look they knew how important a figure my dad was in my life um, and the and it was that really that that sort of kept me in the industry really that the the people um, yeah. the community that the support um, and that's the thing the best thing I can do really is keep supporting people and um, helping them on their audiobook journeys because you never know what people are going through um, Very true. Yeah. Neil, Neil's always said it and I've always said it people come in the studio sometimes they might be in a bad mood but you know as a producer it's your job to to, to relax them calm them down make them a tea make them laugh if you can I do try and do try and make them laugh not doesn't always work <laughs> i end up laughing but they don't but um but uh yes yeah, so it's, it's it's trying to relax people and at the end of the day you as a producer you go on a journey with uh the narrator you're telling this story and that's probably why you know a few years down the line um narrators come back in or a few months down the line and they say do you remember that book we did i mean uh, i'm working this week with a guy called richard burnip and we did a book five years ago uh, was one of my first books at Labrook and he come in and said well you know why haven't I been in since well, obviously different projects different voices he's worked elsewhere he's been very busy but we've we've you know we're good friends we've just got chatting away and things we remembered from five years ago from the book we did before yeah. um it was all about Jack Wilde uh, the artful dodger yeah, it was nice. really really cool and um so we t we're talking about that and um you know it's it's I think you know part of being a good producer is being a good people person yeah. and um you know you know listening to people and exactly you've got to listen to them <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the first thing you gotta do you gotta listen you gotta listen yes but um um but uh yes yeah, so that's um so that's why i'm yeah i'm still quite interested and obviously obviously um on the clubhouse as well we do have a yeah. couple of blind we have obviously samuel and there's other um, people who come through and say look we've listened to clubhouse um we listen we love audio books um i was working with the great peter kenny this uh this month last month no, maybe it's two months ago and he, he was brilliant i've been looking forward to working with him for a long long time and i was talking about this sort of thing about accessibility and what audiobooks mean to people yeah. and he said to me that he's got some people who've got chronic pain chronic illnesses and in the middle of the night they turn on switch on one of peter's audiobooks and i just thought that was amazing and they yeah. said they felt comfort in his voice oh, um, wow. telling a story yeah and i yeah. it's sort of you know you know and the blind and visually impaired coming through saying look this is their lifeline um for dad radio uh was was his lifeline and audio was his lifeline so um yeah that's why i love yeah. this industry it's audio a privilege books. it's a privilege yeah. isn't it to uh, provide it that, is provide just a little bit of an escape if or you know a distraction if that's the case or just just enjoyment and pleasure it's, it's a privilege yeah um, dealing with uh, lots of different personalities as they come yes. through the studio doors <laughs> have you a a one-size-fits-all process to working with narrators and actors or, or do you find yourself having to adjust in order to get the best out of the yes. performer that's a very good question actually and, and, and um we have so many different different t actor types come in some some won't talk at lunchtime they're resting their voice you know okay. they, can't, they can't possibly <laughs> possibly talk to you or, the, or they or they they have a kip in the studio on the studio floor uh, i won't name his name but he has a kip in the studio <laughs> floor shuts the door so don't contact me till an hour's gone by but um oh. no it, i do try and i try and be myself uh, to, to all of them depending on their stature i mean we get people come in authors reading their own book and they're very passionate about it and they're very you know which fair enough it's their baby and that sort of thing so you've got to you've got to handle them differently you do get big um 
celebrities you know they say oh you know I, I do it this way this is how I do it um but my role you know when when I get the list of pickups back and I get all the corrections back I think well you know I've, I've got to say something during the production I can't just let it go because they're a celebrity yeah um, we've got to get them back in again so it's um some some do have yeah some do have big egos but um but uh, once we're in the studio we're we're, we're all laughing the, the the key is to try and just relax them and sort yeah. of um get to know them get to know them and um everybody to me is a celebrity when i when they all turn up i'm at the top of the stairs you know oh what are you doing here and they're like well you booked us in <laughs> but, uh, but but um it is it's good it's so good to just to, to see that you know see everyone come into the studio again we we did have a the situation with the lockdown working from home um for the last two years which was very interesting um yeah. getting experienced narrators set up at home yeah. um, and newbie narrators uh, certain people recording in their wardrobes um which was very interesting actually that's another that's another story uh, yes <laughs> i was working with a, a chap who um we, we were recording Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea and um he was going inside his actual it's a flat pack wardrobe not a walk-in wardrobe and his daughter had to sellotape the door shut um when he was in there <laughs> and um, he was he was um <laughs> he had a, a miner's lamp miner's lamp on his head it was, it was all dark i thought what's going on are we have we lost connection but he was in the in the wardrobe and he yeah. clicked on this miner's lamp and um, I could see him on the on the zoom there and he was losing oxygen. I thought, well, this is perfect. You know, 20,000 leagues under the sea. It's, 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 it's as if he's under underwater. But um, no, it was very interesting. And uh, it was that was a challenge. And um, but it was but it was good. We kept it all going again. The audiobook community, mm. um, you know, and that's the rise of Clubhouse. I've got a notification mm. just now, actually, that I've been on Clubhouse a year. And that's how we met certain friends which you would normally go um you'd normally go networking with them in person but with clubhouse you can be networking um just like that yeah. so we uh, met some amazing people um through that so yeah would you say confidence is a skill that one has to acquire when directing and producing an audio but working with you know as you say high yes. personalities and things like that is that how have you found yourself has your confidence grown is is that a is that ever on the forefront of your mind when when dealing with these, you know, with, with egos or, or anyone really? Because obviously having to, you know, stop somebody from giving a performance can be a little bit yeah. daunting, I guess. I, I would say I've grown in confidence. So when, when the previous jobs, I've lost previous jobs, you, 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 you do get hit a bit of, bit of um, lack of confidence. Mm. And uh, I, I've had people in the studio say to me, well, which way are we going to do this? And I say, well, let me just let me just ask Neil. <laughs> let me just let me just yeah. look it up. And I think, well, no, you've got to make a decision and 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 run with it. And this is the yeah. thing. And lately, it's a case of, well, it's my decision. At the end of the day, we're the ones that are going to have to be picking up all the pieces, all the pickups. And mm. We're the ones that, if you get it wrong, um, you know, it looks going to look bad on us. So you you do have to be. Yeah, I am more confident now in in, in directing. Um, but at the beginning, it was so. Well, what do you think? What do you think? And I was so lucky to work with experienced narrators. Yeah. Now, when we get new narrators in, it, it's up to me, really. You know what? What you know, and we can get in touch with the publishers, which is very, very good. I do, yeah. I do, um, I do like it when a, a a good tip really is if you're a new narrator or experienced narrator, just email your producer before the the recording session, and if you have any queries, and say, look, mm. this is something that's coming up. What do we do? We had a book this week with lots of charts and diagrams, which normally on the day we sort of work out how we're going to do mm. but by a simple email to me then back to the publisher we we actually worked out we actually got a note from the author how to how to word this uh, yeah. diagram etc which didn't stop any time in the studio yeah so um but no confidence is is something that uh, yes um, is, is very important in this role you've got to be confident to do it if it's wrong okay fair enough but um yeah you've got to be confident and yeah. um manage 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 it goes a lot of people burn out quite easily as well and uh you've got to be cautious of that you've got to sort of say well you know if we can do one more chapter at least um yeah. you'll, you'll appreciate it in the long run so yeah yeah and i get that i get that a lot so a large majority uh, of the questions uh, i get asked to ask our guests uh, is actually mm. about pre-production uh, when a narrator yeah. is booked in to come into the studio what needs to be done ahead of ahead of stepping into that studio by the narrator uh, and what is your pre-production process as an engineer as a director producer 
So, so for my pre-production processes, I do go through the PDF beforehand, go through the the, the script beforehand, mm-hmm. um, check check things out. I do liaise with the with the narrator just to make sure that they're one hundred percent happy with everything. Mm-hmm. They go through obviously marking up characters, marking up voices, certain words they they might want to flag with me to look up. They mm-hmm. can't find using Forvo, Uglish, how do you say all the different websites, Miriam Webster, uh, the usual, the classics, yeah. um, and uh, <laughs> and. And uh, they, they, they go through it and they, they, they prep it. And uh, I do give them, if it's a new narrator um, or an author coming to read their own book, I like to give them a little call to say, look, mm. um, watch what you're eating the night before and, and, and the morning. Stomach rumbles, avoid anything spicy, avoid dairy. Um, uh, I, I say to them, look, try and read the book out aloud. Um, you know, just in your, in your head, you might know your book inside out but just try and read it aloud. And a lot of people can't believe that they take two to three days to read a, read an audio book. They think, oh, it should just be a quick, <laughs> quick, so, you know, quick, yeah. quick hour or two. Um, and I sort of get, if it's a dual read, I try and get narrators to talk to each other to say, look, this, if you guys can just decide on how you're going to do these characters. Mm. Um, and it's, it's just, just answering queries, really. And then um, on the day of the studio, make sure everything's set up and clean and tidy and welcoming for them if they've got any special requirements for when they're in the studio. Um, and we just, we just have fun with it. The, the key is to, to relax them beforehand, to talk to them beforehand and say, look, you know, we're in this together, really. We've got yeah. to get this done in two or three days and we've got to, we've got to work together. Um, if they need to leave early or anything like that, we sort of work it into the schedule. No, it's, 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 uh, and, and that's, that's what we do really. We, and we record, we record mainly we do fluff and repeat we don't do punch and roll at Labrook, so mm. that's nice and simple for people just to record and compose themselves. And that yeah. way the editor's got two or three takes, really, to, to mm. get the best bits out of. So um, that's why we do it that way. Yeah, yeah. What what features in a narrator do you look for when directing and editing that make it a successful partnership and performance? What do you... What do you would love what do narrators do that you say i wish everybody did this <laughs> well yeah. read the book read the book yeah. <laughs> I, I do i do i do hear these um these stories that people are being told to read the first two chapters and then the last chapter only and right. be taken be taken on a journey be taken on a journey with the with the with the listener and i think wow that's a great idea but that's a, unless there might be something in the middle of the book that that's very yeah. pertinent, very important. Um, you need to know about this character. You need to know about the subplots. So, I recommend reading the entire book. Um, mm. um, sometimes narrators get in touch with authors. They find them on Twitter, or they go to the publisher and say, "Look, can I have a word with the with the author here?" And they do maybe a Google a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet, and they they have a list of. Um, uh, pronunciations that they're after if it's a science fiction book etc or a certain character how would you want this one character portrayed etc and um they're the best partnerships and in the long run when the book is out there um the if they tweet about it the narrator then the author should be if they made a friendship there they will retweet etc and yeah. and the, and that's you know that's the best marketing really is when the author actually tweets if they're allowed to by the publisher of course if they're not constrained there but yeah. um so we do try and encourage to talk to the author or talk to the publisher to talk to the author. Um, so, and, and then they're the best ones. And then, um, you know, when they come in and they actually, you know, part of my role, I do need, do need to know the book, um, but the sheer volume of books that we produce um, as producers, it's more an onus on the uh, narrator to know the book fully mm. um, and to come in with like, you know, what should we do about this character? And let me know beforehand um, mm-hmm. as opposed to during the recording. But um no, it's people who are flexible, people who know that, you know, if we can do a certain amount by a certain time, um, you know, people who are not too, if, if you make a mistake, they're happy to go back and correct it. Yeah. Um, I used to have people say, I used to say, oh, you've said that wrong. And they would say, no, I didn't. And then they'd say, well, play it back to me. And I'd say, well, the time you've said that, you could have said it, said it again. <laughs> Obviously, if I kept stopping people, yeah. that's the thing, a working partnership. I, I get some good feedback from some narrators that say look you just let me get on with it you let me pick up myself where there's a problem um i do you know do point out where there's a major problem but yeah. um i know narrators don't like to be constantly stopped all the, all the time but obviously mm. if there is a problem uh, to yeah. stop pickups pickups occurring um you know someone who knows how to handle the mic someone who knows how to be the right distance away from the mic uh, not moving their head around too much bumping up and down you know not bobbing up and down yeah. not too dramatic in their physical uh, appearance and also in their um what they wear as well the clothing that doesn't rust, rustle too much um but these are the sort of things i have on my introductory call with um 
these yeah narrators yeah. or authors and um it, it's it's good fun working with um with authors reading their own books actually they sort of you, you're taken on that journey with them and yeah. um it's uh that's always they're always a good fun to do as well so uh yes. yeah i bet i bet staying um staying present and focused during mm. hours and hours <laughs> of recording as you're directing and pro uh, proofing along with the narrator have you any tips for prolonging your concentration <laughs> well it's it's a very tough one i mean obviously putting your phone on flight mode but, but due to being in the studio so long you do need to have emails coming through um so that can take your mind off things so it's mm. best not to maybe maybe have more breaks and check them um, i get messages from neil whilst we're recording and i sort of like re read what he said um and that sort of takes me away from where i am in the script but yeah. see as a as a producer you're following word for word in fact we we sort of do it where we hold the apple pencil and bounce along like a karaoke to make sure every single word is read yeah. um and it can be draining and tiring and you know we always say take as many breaks as you want um yeah. the only trouble is when you come out of the studio and you sit and have a cup of tea and a shortbread biscuit or a ginger nut you sort of um you don't want to get <laughs> back in <laughs> but you say, oh, it's quite quite relaxing out here but um and we've got a brilliant cafe on at labrook down there who they're a brilliant couple who run the cafe and they they sort of once you go down there for lunch you think oh, <laughs> it's quite relaxing. but no it's it is you've got to take breaks um and we we change the um resolution we change the, the screen on our iPads to black and white, it's better for your eyes that way. Right. It's a, that's another accessibility thing in the accessibility section of an iPad. And, uh, you know, we, um, you know, we have lots of tea and coffee. We encourage standing up and walking around and yeah. um, encourage going to the toilet. That's always very good because <laughs> um, the producer needs to go to the toilet too. So that's a good opportunity. Ours. But um, that's, that's what we do. It's, it's um, in, in, in trying to keep people motivated and their energy mm. levels up. We don't recommend coffee at the very beginning, but everyone has one. <laughs> they up, but they've had about two or three before they turn up. But um, we don't recommend coffee um, too much, but sometimes you might need a little boost. Yeah. Um, so uh, that sort of thing, really. Yeah, I think it must be interesting when having so many different people come in, that they're different sort of attitudes to keep themselves awake or motivating yes. themselves throughout the day. Um, you know, I've, I mean, I have heard stories about um, folks, uh, narrators doing a little bit of yoga halfway yeah, through yes. and yes. limbering up and things like that. That does happen. And, and obviously some some smokers and some people vape in the studio but, <laughs> but uh, whilst they're recording. Um, but um, it's amazing, actually, some people that if they vape or they talk, they sort of they don't go back to the beginning of a sentence. So they might say a sentence to a comma and then vape and then continue from the comma. And I think, well, can you just please go back to the, this is what you're saying before about being flexible yeah. it doesn't hurt just to go back to the beginning of the sentence is it really um, you've had people does. just just go for a <laughs> <laughs> in between he walked down the road and said da, 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 and it's, it's crazy but um no the, the yoga does happen i mean i'm i um i don't do that often now but um i i'm used to i did salsa dancing for 10 10 years so Very i do nice. a little bit of a little bit of salsa dancing if anyone's up for doing it. <laughs> not normally these days not due to covid and um no, but uh, no, so it's moving around um, and yoga, people, mm. you know, I thought, what, what on earth's going on there? And there are people are doing a bit of yoga and a bit of breathing. Yeah. Um, and some people just want to get outside for a few minutes and they go outside for a few minutes and call their agents, et cetera, and yeah. go for a walk around the car park, et cetera. Um, and we encourage that because, you know, it's, it can be intense. We, mm. we record probably five hours a day, um, you know, an hour and a half a break an hour and a half and then an hour a break an hour a break and it's sort of um it's it can be quite intense it yeah. can be quite intense but when you when you look at it as um you sort of look at it as uh, obviously you get the we want to get the best performance and the most you know and so everyone's got to do their own their own thing i've got to make sure it's being recorded the best sound quality and you've got to make sure you're reading the words but yeah. um when you look at it as a as a job and per money to be a fit you need to be efficient really as well with it um mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with editing. When I when I come home and do my editing, I've got so many editing clients now. Um, I sort of I could edit in the morning and be distracted by Twitter or distracted by Clubhouse, and then I think, well, I've only earned a certain amount today, um, mm. so I need to work on later to try and catch up, um, mm. catch up with that. And that that can all all affect your mental health if you're constantly working. I Absolutely. Mean, since when Dad died, I sort of went straight into the work and far far too much and. Um, I would say that uh, you do need to give yourself breaks and you do need to schedule mm. things in because mm. um, you can you can overdo it 
Mm. And it can lead to problems. I mean, if you're sitting down for a long period of time anyway, um, I've had to see an osteopath recently. Um, oh really for, for, for back, just, just just being sat down editing um yeah. repet, repetiting sorry repetitive editing audio disorder also known as read i've just made that up <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um but uh it does you can get this with your you know constantly editing um audio books yeah. um because it, i mean audio books editing takes me two to two and a half times the the time of the book so a 10 hour book will take 25 hours yeah. And if you think there's maybe 40 hours in a working week, so you've got to try and find another half a week somewhere yeah. at the weekend. So, yeah, the key is to try and, um, to try and you know, and if, if you say to someone, manage people's expectations. I hear this all the time. It's a great, great thing. Always, you know, um, promise something, put a few more days on it. And if you do deliver it early, then um, yeah. brilliant. It shows that, uh, you know, when, you're on schedule. <laughs> when, um, so when you know planning out your days especially when working from home doing you know editing as, as you are today are you quite yeah. rigid then in structure do you do you sort of plan out your this is the time that i'm working then i'm going to have a break and go for a walk or whatever are you very yeah. rigid in that structure well i have been lately yes mm. i've um so this morning i've done a, a voiceover for government i still do my accessible at work so i still done mm. a voiceover for government um then i'm doing this podcast today then i've got a, a friend um, who wants to go for an hour's walk um, but then I've got to get back and do some other pickups and things like that. So I've sort of in my head, I think, right, I've got to get that done by two, by three, by four. Yeah. Um, when, when editing audio now, I do say to myself, right, I've got these two or three days, but then unexpected jobs turn up. Um, yeah. we, we have a project, Neil said, right, well, we've got a, um, we've got a book that needs to be delivered this week. Um, he's in the studio with the Terry Pratchett work. He's, he's very tied up. Can you ed- do these pickups? And I actually, I don't, I'd hate to admit it, but I actually quite enjoy doing pickups. I actually enjoy merging audio so they sound seamless. And yeah. obviously the years and years of editing audio, 20 years now, um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm very, I like to think I'm very good at it. <laughs> but um, that's why it keeps coming back. But um, no, and, and, it's, and it's people might record the pickups at a different studio. They might record their pickups at home where they've been mm. in the studio and part of my job is to, to match them up and um, yeah. I actually quite quite enjoy doing that so I sort of that sort of comes in on top of the other workload um, yeah. which puts a spanner in the work sometimes but it but it's sort of um, it, it all evens itself out I mean mm. you know I'm always even though uh, when I'm at my very busiest I'm always talking with um, new narrators helping them out mm. because suddenly you're up to date um, and then you get a phone call from that narrator you spoke to two years ago saying, do you remember I was going to set that home studio up? <laughs> well, I've finally done it. I said, oh, well, brilliant. Sorry you've been waiting so long. I said, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Thank you very much. So I try and where I can help as many people as possible mm-hmm. because you just never know. I think the key, the, the key is helping people, um, helping people and doing a good job. And then uh, hopefully, hopefully, eventually, um, these you might get recognised and people. Oh yes, I remember that guy. Yes, yeah, so, I agree cool. absolutely. We know, um, we know things are, are, are changing both for the good and quite scary um, within this industry. Uh, and as yes. there are loud voices championing, uh, championing, championing uh, better rates for uh, narrators, but oftentimes we find that the editors, the proofers, the engineers, the studio owners, they get overlooked. Yes. Um, what can we do to raise the profile of the production staff to, to fight for higher rates for everyone who's working on those projects? Well, I think, you know, I do a lot on social media and it's it's being visible, uh, being more visible as an editor, as a producer. Um, mm. I, I do a lot on Instagram and Twitter and it sort of it lets people know that there is someone else behind it. There, there's obviously, yes, when on Audible that you have the... Uh, the credits it's the narrator and it's Mm. their cv it's their audio up there but behind the scenes there's the producer the studio owner the editor and of course the amazing proofreader Mm. who um, as neil was saying before and we always say that they are the probably the most important person in the process because they actually are the last person to hear it before it goes out into the world and they need to say stop you know this is this is wrong here and even the editor when they're editing they have to say i i have some we we have some brilliant editors at Labrook who who stop and say quick before they leave the studio today they've been saying this all wrong i live in that town and <laughs> they've been saying it wrong you know yeah. and um so so yes yeah, it's, it's it's just being visible and, and and being loud and clear and obviously with ai now um, the mm. big companies are are sort of you know even google have said they're going to look into it and um you know it's 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 very worrying i mean so uh, once you you know the, the publishers give the 
the, the lump sum to the studio and it's divvied out between the studio owner, the mm. producer, the editor, the check listener. There isn't, there isn't much there. And, mm. um, so it's, it's just being visible and letting people know what you do, um, and, and doing a good job and, um, you know, using human voices, always using, using human voices, making sure that uh, AI doesn't, doesn't win. And, and, and a way, way forward for this is is authors as well getting involved in you know it's their baby it's their book do they really want um do they really want a robot to read their book to somebody mm. i mean i know that the, the ai is quite good um and it would save a lot of money and time but um like i was saying to you before uh, peter kenny was saying you know this personal connection to the to the author uh, to the to the narrator and the listener uh, mm. with their you know that someone with a chronic illness um you know it's that personal connection we're mm. telling stories. We're we're getting into their homes. We're getting into their ears and things like that. Yeah. You you and your children as well. You you'd want um, a human. Yeah. Human. So so it's raising that profile. And there's some brilliant organisations, the Audiobook Creators Alliance, uh, which Neil has set up, and mm. I'm a big part of it, um, which championing the rights of all. You know, uh, raising the profile for everybody. Um, there's Panna as well, and there's other other organisations um, around mm. around the world, um, and, and and things you know, social media brings everyone brings everyone together, and um, absolutely. So so it's um it's yeah it's it's it is tough. I mean I yeah it's um in five years the money hasn't been raised that much for producing yeah. and editing. Um, the way forward to to earn more money as a producer and editor, I would say, is to work directly with an author. Um, this is the great find away voices which has just come about and there's other yeah. other platforms are available um and you can communicate directly with an author and you can set your own rates yeah. so um i've had better rates by going directly to to through uh, narrators who go directly to authors mm. um but um the industry as a whole yes we need to to make sure we keep the best keep the best talent in the in the industry so a pay rise would be good, please. <laughs> if you're listening, yes, yes. I agree. Listening. Are you um? Yeah. Are you optimistic about the future of this industry? Um, I I am. I think um, you know, a bit worried about the AI threat um, mm. because I know that people like to c cut cut back. This is what happened with the Braille transcription company. In the end, AI was used to voice certain things. Mm. Um, but when you're talking about your big big uh, you know books now and obviously there's there's audio dramas and there's all, all star yeah. audio dramas and things um and no, I'm, I'm 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 optimistic i think um you know it's it's been growing year on year um yeah. uh, it's it's something to be aware of you you've always got to be aware of your threats in any industry um so it's something to be aware of um but um i'm i'm quite optimistic quite optimistic for it um money wise i'm not too sure <laughs> it, all, it all depends i mean obviously a lot of people are now working from home studios so yeah. it, there is a big move now for people to work from home um commuting is is, is you know, very expensive cost of living yeah. but then i suppose cost of living you're at home using your electricity so you'll have to pay more of that <laughs> so, yeah. but um yeah I'm, I'm quite optimistic for it um you know we, we all in this world now with all the bad things going on it's great to escape with an audio book um it's great yeah. to to, to, yeah. to to get a bit of just something different something and, and follow your dreams and passions and um yeah, and pay your Audible subscriptions. Um, <laughs> so, so it's cool. You, um, of course, host uh, and co-host groups on Clubhouse uh, and yes. have had a really big hit with the shows. I know uh, I know how much value having yourself and Neil and other industry pros come on Clubhouse and chat about just about everything. Could you tell us yeah. a little bit about your experience in having such a hands-on approach with helping so many in the community and, and perhaps how important it is for folks to get more involved within the larger audiobook community? Well, I, I think it's brilliant. I, it's it's, uh, it's I didn't have an iPhone to begin with, and it was all exclusive to iPhone to begin with, and mm -hmm. you needed to be invited. And um, I tried it on old iPads and old iPhones. It just it didn't work. And when it came on to Android, um, I joined. Uh, Neil was already on there, and Anna Clements had set up the audiobook group. Mm. And um, uh, since I joined, I haven't. Been, I've been on it every single day. I've met so many, so many people in different industries, not only in the audiobook industry, but in other industries as well. Mm. Um, but mention it. I, I would talk about audiobooks. And um, the thing about Clubhouse is, you you talk like we're doing now, um, and people are listening. You just don't know who's listening or what part of what you've said resonates with them. Yeah. And um, we just try and help people. That's that's our main thing. Every week we we do the Sunday schmooze five to seven UK time. Um, <laughs> meet myself and Neil, and we we just sort of 
we just talk about our weeks. We talk about the, the different things that have come up. We talk about how excited it is to see certain narrators. We talk about, we interview certain narrators we've worked with. Um, and people in the audience ask questions and they say, ah, I had this same problem. Or, ah, I get around this by doing this. Yeah. And every week we are learning from them as well. And I'm learning every week. I've been contacted by several people uh, who want audiobook demos done. I've been contacted by people who want to meet up when they're in the UK. And I met the great uh, Jennifer Aquino. She's on um, Clubhouse and um, every other social media. And she said, I'm coming to London. Met you on Clubhouse. Would you like to meet, meet up? So we met, met up a few, uh, few months back. And um, you're, just, you're just meeting people. You're talking to them honest. Um, you can answer the question straight away. If you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know the answer. And there might be someone in the audience who does. Yeah. Um, and just help, just helping people out. I mean, um, you know, and uh, just talking from the heart, really. Um, yeah. So we work with uh, one of the main co contributors on, the, on a Sunday, Samuel Wilkins, up and coming mm. blind director. And his perspective um, has made me change the way I think about different things. His perspective of how the studio should be laid out, his perspective of the audio programs, the DAWs that he uses, yeah. um, his perspective, how he edits um, is something that, Yes, you might think you know about, but not until you hear it from the horse's mouth. Of you know, course. Not until you hear it from somebody who's having these problems or, uh, or he's not having problems, someone with these creative solutions to these, mm. these issues. So, um, so I, I think it's that being part of this community is, is, is amazing. Um, there are new rooms every, every week. There was a new room started up last night, um, connecting authors, connecting authors to narrators. So authors can come on and sort of chat and um, you never know, there might be a match in the audience and yeah. that would be a great, great thing to do. It's finding the time I was explaining to somebody um, this week about Clubhouse and he wants to join, but he said, well, when do you actually find the time to do it? And that's a very good point. Whereas with a podcast, you can record um, at any time yeah. um, and then, then edit it when you can and have a two or three in the, in the, in the pipeline. Whereas with yeah. Clubhouse, it's live. Um, and that's what that's what's quite good about it. And they've got a facility now where you can listen again yeah. to a previous one. But sometimes people just do it live and you've got that FOMO, fear of missing out. You sort of think, I've got to go on at five o'clock tonight. Otherwise, I'll miss some key piece of yeah. information. So it, it does work both ways. But um, I've met, yeah, so many amazing people, um, you know, people I've known actually on social media, but, but on Clubhouse now we're chatting. Oh, hang on a minute. You know, oh, yes, I know you. I've known I've followed your career. Oh yeah, we're chatting. So, um, so it was, uh, it is, it is, it is good fun. And so say before, you know, you could do something on your own and say, well, this is me. I'm going to be insular and do this myself, but there's so much more to be had from being part of a community, um, yeah. and recommending other people, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, just from my own experience of, of, of using this podcast to just to get into, you know, to meet fellow members of the community i live in quite rural uh, northern england and there's oh. not that many audiobook producers and, and narrators and, and such around my local area so yeah i thought it was quite easy to find yourself on your lonesome and then suddenly you have this yeah. platform and you're able to chat just as if you would be down the pub and, yeah. and you can ask all these questions or just chat about familiar issues that yeah. not everybody goes through it's it's really special well, we have um, there's a there's a room on a Sunday morning, which is not it's it's just we talk about audio books, but it's more like a friendly chat. They're having a coffee down in the morning, Sunday morning. And we talk about all different issues in our lives, et cetera, et cetera. But what links us are the audio books. That's what's got us you know, close together. And it's just a lovely, lovely place to go and just and chat. And, you know, whilst you're, even whilst you're doing the washing up, or you're going for a walk. So many people are out walking their dogs and they stop and they say, oh, you're sorry, I'm out with the dog at the moment. But this is I wanted to say something. And um, it's a good way of, you know, keeping in touch with people as well. Yeah. Um, you know, finding an update every week of what they've been up to. So, yeah, no, it's very good. Good fun. Absolutely. Recommend it. So sign yeah, up. Absolutely. I'll put <laughs> up all of the, the information. Yeah. All of the information for the clubhouse will be in the show notes um, oh, below. So, yeah, hopefully if, uh, if if folks aren't already tuning in, they can certainly do so. Um, yeah. Just before I cannot believe how quickly um, <laughs> this close to hour has gone. Um, just before we run out of time. Have you any projects coming up in the future that you're excited about that, that perhaps you can tell us tell us a little bit about? Um, it's it's hard to tell. I've I've got plenty of 
work booked in uh, for, for for in the studio. Um, oh no, there is. Oh, there is something. No, I can't say what it is. No, I, I'm. Um, there's some. In, some things are under NDA. There is something quite exciting, quite topical uh, in the news at the moment that I'm doing, um, and it's with a with a author coming to read their own book. So I can't really talk about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> just um, I'm quite excited that I'm finally getting on top of things. <laughs> I'm quite excited. But I I treat every book, everyone who comes into the studio, I get excited for every single one of them. If it's somebody I haven't seen for a while, um, if it's somebody who is new to the industry, mm. if it's somebody who's might be famous or whatever, um, I, I get excited for for, for everything. Um, I'm trying to think what I've got coming up. Well, obviously I'm off to Geneva. I've been doing this, uh, you know, book on the Higgs boson particle, so I'm actually um, off to Geneva tomorrow. So that's yeah. <laughs> quite excited for that. But um, now that I'm trying to think, really, it's um, we, we've got obviously the big projects on at the moment, which I'm sort of like helping out with the Terry Pratchett stuff. I was obviously yeah. Neil's producing that mainly. Um, but um, I, I, it's, there's, just, there's just so many. We, we, the books books come in all the time. Uh, they have tight deadlines. Um, you know, we get to work with different authors. Um, I had a, a great book, um, great working with a guy called Wat, Matt Wyman. Sorry, Wat, Matt, Wyman. <laughs> Matt Wyman. Matt Wyman. Matt uh, Wyman this week. And um, we worked with him years ago. He did a book on um, pigs, living with pigs. And um, it was all about life and with pigs. And then two years later, Neil said he's coming back again to do the sequel of Pigs. And I said, well, uh, what, what, what is it? What is it? What's it called? He said, it's called Sausages. And I was devastated. I said, well, if he, he's not coming in the studio, really, if he's turned those pigs into sausages, then um, that's obviously, I'm not going to be too happy about this. Um, but it turns out it was about sausage, sausage dogs. It was oh, right. sausage. <laughs> so, but but he, he came in again. We hadn't seen him for two years. And he did a book about ultra marathons and how failure, his book's called Failure is an Option. Yeah. And he went, to, that was so completely different genre. Um, he did the book on pigs, he did the book on sausage dogs, and now he's doing a book on ultra marathons. And he asked to record that with us at Labrook. And it was just, it was just so good to, good to see him. So he came yeah. in and uh, we caught up. It's been a few years. Um, so yeah, so so that's I'm I'm excited for every, every project that comes in. Um, it's I have <laughs> what's next week? Um, oh yes, I'm working with an author next week. Uh, I'm working on the end of this uh, book. I'm working on uh, the week after. Um, yes, there, there, there's so many. I, 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 it's hard to say really. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, so, I'm being no. specific. But there's so many, so many things going on. Um, so many things I'm working on, I'm afraid. So I can't sounds say. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, sounds fantastic. And I hope you have a wonderful time in Geneva oh, and on your you. travels and things. And I hope you get that yes. Higgs boson selfie. <laughs> 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 That's the main thing, and that'll be all over, you know, all over Instagram. Yeah, uh, by the end of, end of the week weekend. But um, yes, yeah, so it's just, it's, uh, I don't normally I don't normally do these these crazy things, but um, yeah, I've, got obviously to... I've got to yeah just tr try and try and take a break every so often now. So just put book this last minute trip so absolutely i yeah. don't blame you i think it's gonna be great <laughs> this is great thank you so much once again for joining us on the show um all of the relevant links to social media accounts and websites and the clubhouse info um can be found in the show notes um uh, that just about does it i think for this week's episode another huge thank you to moz uh, and a thank you uh, to the listener as always uh, for making us a part of your day thank you so much moz thank you everybody and